So, got a proper job yet? Is a proper job, Dad. All I'm saying is that you need to get yourself a proper job. In case you ain't noticed, son, we're smack bang in the middle of a crisis right now. And the cost of living is constantly on the rise. I'm fine where I am. Thanks. All I'm saying is that working for a crappy little backstreet cinema that no one goes to on a minimum wage. Nah. That nah, just ain't gonna cut it no more. You need to get yourself a proper job. You also need to stop living with your head in the clouds, son. Well, at least you managed to outgrow that stupid little fantasy of yours. Wanting to be a filmmaker isn't a fantasy, Dad. It is a fantasy, son. It is. And the sooner you get that through your thick skull, the better. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. How was the film? I've seen it six times in a week, but it was good. Only a few people came though. Wish there were more. Well, pictures don't have the same impact nowadays thanks to streaming. And when they do, it's all superhero or blockbuster films. <laughs> Indie films don't stand a chance. No. You're still thinking about it? She used to take me to the cinema as a kid told me movies are dreams, fantasy made real, the impossible possible. Dad, on the other hand, was never the creative type. Never really understood me, but she did. She believed one day I'd make the impossible possible. Why did you stop? She inspired me to make them. And she passed. That dream died with her. Maybe you should make more shorts. You know, she was so happy when you won at that festival. You know how you always loved cameras? I really hope this can be the film to inspire you to make them. To make movies of your own and become a filmmaker. I know you can be. I was gonna give this to you on your birthday. film I've written since she passed. A life changed. Don't leave me in suspense. How is it? For a first draft, it's really good. I mean, there's still a bit of work to do, but it's good. <laughs> but... But... Look, are you sure you're ready to make another film? I mean, it's not even been a year since. This has got a lot of ties to your personal life. I just, I don't want you to rush into things if you're not. I'm sure. Listen, all that time being scared to open the cupboard, I couldn't even hold my camera, let alone turn it on. 
I found it better to put on films for audiences, whilst my passion for filmmaking died with my mum. But I do believe doing this will help me respark that passion, and maybe, hopefully, work on my grief. Okay. Good. Well, you sort out the next draft, mm -hmm. and I'll sort out the rest. Hi, Mum. Missing you always. I thought about what Cameron said. Maybe you would want me to make a film. You always said you'd rent out the local cinema, make a premiere for it, screen it to locals and press. I'm sorry I left it so long, Mum. I just... I just fell into a pit, and I couldn't get out. Even now, I still feel like I'm climbing. Not quite at the top. <laughs> Am I crazy? Is making this film a waste of time? Would it even make you happy? Would it help with my grief? I don't know. Not until I try, but I don't even know if I've still got the skills. When you died, I gave up everything. Everything except my projectionist job. I wanted to keep the magic alive for others. I lost it. I didn't want that for anyone else. You once told me movies are dreams, and they are. If I could make this, will I have a hang on my grief? Because right now, at this present moment, I need you, Mum. Dad isn't there for me. When you died, he became a recluse, even from me. It's like he died with you. If I can make this, do you think it will bring us closer together, despite him always hating me making films? If it does, if I meant to do this, please show me the way. I love you, Mum. Nervous? Every time. Well, think of it like this. In a few months, when the short is finished, you'll be in here, in this screen, on that stage, giving a speech to the locals, uh, maybe even the press, premiering your film. I couldn't be more proud of you. Thank you. Now, the crew will be here at 10. Do you want to meet them in here or in the bar? I'll meet them in here. Right you are. Thanks, Cameron. No worries. For everything. For pushing me to do this, for giving us the cinema, and for being the best manager and friend. Keep the magic alive. You got this? Right, um, time for a tinkle. <laughs> Movies are dreams, fantasies made real, and the impossible possible. I am and always will be proud of you. This you managed to outgrow that stupid little fantasy of yours. It is a fantasy, son. It is. The sooner you get that through your thick skull, one day, the better. Your father will learn to understand. You just got to give him time. Never stop making movies. Oh.
promise me one thing. Always keep trying. Make your dreams come true. I promise, Mum. Let's make a movie. Alright, everyone. You okay? Yeah, sorry. Just never seen one before. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Film. Indeed it is. How does it work? Like, how does projecting a film really make an impact? It's a powerful device. The illusion of light creating an experience for all to see. It's a dream become reality. So if I play the film in darkness to a room full of people, the light creates the illusion. You're transported from the cinema screen and into the film that you're watching. Perfect distraction from the darkness of life. When you look behind you in a cinema screen, you see a beam of light. That lights us, bringing joy and imagination to all those willing and wanting to experience it. I call it the power of cinema. That's the role of the projectionist. That's why we do what we do. But can we do it with this film? Yeah, we can. At least I hope we can. Come on, we've got a film to shoot. The actors are ready. The crew's ready. How about you? You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Sounds ready. Camera's rolling. A life changed. Scene one A. Take one. Action. I can't believe it's been six months already, Mum. The film's almost finished, and the premiere's next week. That's sort of the reason why I'm here. Got something for you. I wish you could be there. Son. There you are. You okay? Pretty sure nerves. Oh, it's perfectly normal to be nervous. Hell, I'd be nervous if I was a filmmaker. <laughs> it's not that. Your mother. You're worried about making her proud. Picking up my camera again. Scripting, casting, crewing, shooting. It was all a big relief from the depression. <laughs> Hell, I even loved making the film. What if I let her down? That's what tonight's about for me. Not just screening for the first time, but making her proud. Speak from the heart. Be confident. Remember that all of this is for her, for her memory. She'd be so honored and proud. Now, um, I think someone's here to see you. I'll catch up with you later. Son, 
Hey, Dad, what are you doing here? It's your mum. She sent me a sign. Right? What does that mean? The ticket. I mean, it's all a bit odd, really. I was standing there at her grave, just remembering all the wonderful times we had together. And all of a sudden, something hit me on the foot. I mean, it turned out later on. It was a ticket you left. That was for her, not you. Well, it was clearly a sign she wanted me in. Whether you like it or not, son. Dad. I always wanted you here. You always pushed me away. You never believed in me. Look, son. I know I've not always been supportive of your films. You're not even the award-winning one. I was always banging on about getting a proper job. That's only because I thought I knew what was best for you. But now I've realised it was your mum that knew what was best for you, not me. She was ever so proud of what you've achieved. I heard what you said at her grave. And I should have been there for you. When she passed, I saw us both decline into depressions. Seeing what you've achieved, what you're going to achieve. She needs us both together. For each other. Like it should have been from the start. So I'm here for your passion. For your mum. And more importantly, for you. You mean that? Not just saying that, because I needed you, Dad. All this time, I needed you. I need you now, too. I made this film to help me and to make her proud and I was scared I screwed it up. You listen to me, son. If you made it for her, or to help you deal with her death, then you spoke from the heart. And trust me, you've done a good job. I can't wait for you to see it. I'll be there, in the front row. I won't be watching. What do you mean you won't be watching? You just told me you'd be in the front row. I will be, if you give me a second. Oh, I see. You're here because it's what Mum would have wanted, not because you actually want to be here for me, for your own son. Well, if that's the case, then I don't want you I'm here. I'm blind, just son! I'm blind. I can't see anymore. I lost my sight weeks ago. <laughs> Ain't it fair, eh? <laughs> Must be karma's way of biting me in the arse. <laughs> I'm okay with that now. It's fine. Look, son. I've been trying to tell you. I've spent so many hours with that phone in my hand, trying to call you, but I... I just couldn't find the words. Dad. <laughs> Look, son. My sight has gone. I'll never lose the love for you that's been there since the day that you were born. I've struggled immensely since the loss of your mum. And now my sight. But the one thing that keeps the blood coursing through my veins is the pride that you bring me of your passion and your talent. I know I've not always supported you. And I'll never see your work again. But I cannot wait to hear what's on that screen, because I sense it's going to be great. Because you're great, son. Please promise me you won't ever let anyone tell you otherwise, because you are. Well, sounds like it's time to start now, son. From the heart? Best place. <laughs> oh,
It depends on where you work. Like if it's an independent place, people are more respectful. Uh, yeah, but, uh, Thank you all for coming to today's premiere of A Life Changed. For those of you who know me, my last film was over a year ago. Not long after that, my mum died of cancer. I held her hand as she passed, and that image has stayed with me ever since. I gave up making films, and I fell into a pit of depression. My mum used to say that movies are dreams, and the power of movies can impact us all. I lost that for myself, but I kept it alive for others. I put on films for them in this very cinema. It wasn't until recently that I realised the power of movies could impact me again, if I allowed it. My mum was a believer. When I was 14, she bought me my first camcorder. She sent me out into town to film with friends and family. And when I'd get home, we'd edit them together. It was remembering her voice and all the good times we shared that inspired me to make a film from the heart one that would showcase the legacy she left behind. To me, to my dad, and to everyone she loved. You see, the power of movies, of cinema, is real. And it can impact us all. And in those moments of misery and despair, it can help us whether it's for a couple of hours or for a lifetime. So now I present to you a life changed. My love letter to my mum. Thank you. Thank you, Mum. Well, you made it bad, son. <laughs> and me too. A light will come, flicker undone. The winds of change are here for some I shot the show underneath the sun And now I'm too tired to sleep Keep me rolling in your mind as I find a way Keep me rolling Wednesdays and Fridays. I got me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>